Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me again today. Elko, how are you? TT, I'm very well, uh, trying to stay warm in, in very cold UK at the moment. Good, good for you. Okay, in this episode, we are going to be looking at the Italian squad announcement. Uh, but before we get into the detail, maybe I've just share some thoughts about where you think Italy are at the moment following the World Cup. Yeah, um, I hate to say it. <laughs> Um, I guess uh, nor with the other teams that kind of got some knowledge, I just think where Italy are at the moment, I, I don't really know. Um, uh, I, I think they've had so many goes at doing something in the Six Nations over the last decade or two that they haven't done it, and it's getting a little bit frustrating, uh, particularly with some of the performances of the other nations during the World Cup, as we spoke about in depth during our during our pods. Then, um, however. On a positive note, I think what we need to look at is is the 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 clubs, um, the Italian clubs in uh, Treviso and Benetton, um, and in particular with Benetton, who are sitting second in the URC at the moment and uh, and looking pretty good, to be fair. And, and they've got, um, I think, seventeen players in the squad. So uh, if if the new coach can sort of use that spine, as we spoke about um, uh, with, with 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 some of the other teams. Um, then maybe maybe they can go, and that, I don't mean to be disparaging. That's just that's just the facts of where Italy are at the moment. That they're in a bit of a uh, a low spell, I think, and and maybe the new coach um, Casada can can bring some some results there. Um, unfortunately, they've got Wales away, uh, which is probably one they'll be looking at to to, to win. Yeah, am I, mean, am I being harsh? Am I being harsh? <laughs> no, I think reasonably fair. Like they had a very disappointing World Cup, and I think announcing the departure of Kieran Crowley before the World Cup didn't work for them at all. And there were there were it, they didn't look like a happy squad. So I felt for them during the World Cup, but they've still got the bulk of 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 that squad to go forward with. Um, but when I was sort of looking at this, my first impression was that there seems to be very little interest around the Italian squad. Like I had to dig a little bit to find out all the information, exactly. right? So, which is disappointing. You know, you want all six nations to be creating in as much interest as, as each other. Um, so, I mean, hopefully, hopefully they'll be turning the corner now, but who, who knows, but let's dig into the yeah. squad. Uh, so here we go. We've got the forwards first. He's picked. Casada's picked a 34 man squad. Um, five of which are uncapped. And interestingly, um, heavily born in Italy, actually. 27 were born in Italy. Three qualify via parents, three via grandparents, and only one via residency. So, you know, it's a very much a sort of authentic, so to speak, Italian squad. But in the forwards here, what are you, what are you thinking, Elko? What are you seeing? Yeah, I, I don't know much about them. Um, the, the stuff I did see was around this this uh, Exeter uh, chap, Ross Vincent, who, who I think qualifies through through Grandad, I think, um, who's been playing very well for Exeter and in a in a team that's got quite a few internationals um, that will be sort of in squads uh, over the next month or two. Um, he he seems to be um, very well thought of again by Baxter, and he's been talking him up. Uh, was captain of the Italy under twenties. Uh, he's only 21. Um, let let let's see what he can do. Um, I, I didn't know much about them. Obviously, their mi- the sort of p- names that are missing would be sort of Dino Lam in, in the pack, who's who's uh, who's injured at the moment. Um, uh, so yeah, um, I think they'll they'll need they they need to sort of show up this year, don't they? They need they need to with with the pressure of of sort of teams like Portugal um, and Georgia. Um, they they need to to do something and um i think it's you know, again looking at a positive I think, I think it's absolutely brilliant that that all these m- most of the team is 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 um sort of f- from home um they're not relying on project players or anything like that i, I believe they've got the systems in place when uh through to you know connor o'shea from ireland uh, originally and then steve abood so presumably there is there is this talent coming up and through and maybe maybe I am being harsh, and, and maybe it's because they had a bad World Cup, and that was because of the psychology. And actually, with a new coach coming in, they they can do something this year and get a win, um, at least. Yeah, in terms of the forwards, actually, two of the people you picked out were ones that I wanted to as well. Dino Lamb, in particular, because he has been playing really well for Harlequins this season. Well. He looks like he's taken his game to another level as well. So he's a big loss for them. 
Um, and Vincent was the number eight that had the calamity at the back of the scrum last week against Glasgow when he tried to kick the ball out. Um, so I found it kind of hilarious that he's he's playing for Italy, you know, a fabled footballing nation, and he couldn't kick the ball out. I mean, it's a bit harsh. He got tackled at the same time, but, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, he's, he'll, he'll be good for them, I'm sure. My other look at the forwards here, and three of the six props are uncapped. Uh, so this mm. could be, again, similar to Wales. It could be an area of, of weakness for them, if and particularly if they maybe get an injury or two in their propping department. So, yeah, uh, Spagnolo. The, the, the bit, the bit that someone still read in the press, uh, Micro, which is an interesting name um, for a loose head prop. Uh, <laughs> um, apparently, this kid is is very good um, at playing under twenty. He's only he's only a youngster, so you know. I think it's good to see young props coming through and 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 getting blooded early for the future of of the game, particularly uh, you know an Italian pack who they pride themselves on on being good in that in that side of things. But um, did um, Ferrari make it now? Is he in the box? No, I don't think so. No, he, his no. name stood out. Yeah, and, and the other guy actually from uh, um, from the forwards here was is Seb Negri and uh, the reason I bring him up was because yeah. I saw him at the um the premiere of the uh Netflix documentary this week and I didn't know who it was he just looked like this huge like cartoon character and like some of the England players were saying hello to him and stuff and I didn't recognize him from that but I saw a picture afterwards and uh my god he's a size isn't he Seb Negri he's beast of a player as well beast of a player what's yeah. he got 52 caps there you know he's he's you know they should probably be be building around around him. Do we know who who captain is? Yes, Lamaro. Same as before. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to onto the backs here. Um, and the big thing here, really, versus the World Cup squad, is that Menoncello is back, and he was playing some amazing rugby uh, before he got injured. So uh, that's a big plus point. Um, anything else yes. you're seeing here? Um, Tommaso Allen. Um, you know, I've always liked him. Um, he was, you know, pl- playing in behind Marcus Smith at, at Quinns uh, up until this season out in Perpignan now, and and, and doing a good job. Um, I, I've always I've always liked him. Um, see where he ends up playing. Um, um, what was the other chap that we had to keep an eye on? I- Ioni as well. Um, quality player. Um. But yeah, I mean, there's no look again. There's no superstars there really, which is a worry um, for them. Um, every other well, squad, Kepler, just what's the really, isn't he? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. And and, and um, a dog was injured, isn't he? So he's he is, yeah. Okay, so that's a nice roundup of the backs there. But how do you see them play in Elko? Like, do you see any changes in style of play, either because of the selections or maybe the the head coach? Yeah, I, th- I think so. I, th- I think we will see a difference. You know, you've got a uh, Casada, who's who's the new coach, who I loved uh, watching uh, playing um, when he was about. He, a great, a great player, a good reader of the game. Um, I, I'm presuming we, 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 we hopefully we'll we'll see some flair from the from the Italian backline. Um, and uh, but again, you know, as we spoke about in previous pods about previous teams, they they, they need the pack to to win some win some ball. Um, but um, yeah, it'd be, it would be a nice change, I think, to see. I mean, they did try and play a bit um, under their old coach, um, a bit more percentage game, which is international, and I'm sure we'll see that. But uh, hopefully, a bit more flair. Yeah, I mean, I, they did run the ball a lot, I think, in the last year's Six Nations. Um, and what I'd like to see from them, actually, is is my opinion was that they actually ran it too much in the end, and they became kind of predictable. Mm. In that respect, so what I'd like to see from them this year is just to add some some variability to their attacking play when they've got the ball. Maybe some intelligent kicking, some very you know variable kicking um, in attacking play as well. Somebody that yeah. on Twitter at the moment is speaking a lot about playing to the best space um, is something that Russell Earnshaw is talking about a lot, and I think Italy at the moment are a kind of predictable. So um, if they can if they can just add a couple more strings to their bow, I think that they'll be more effective. Yeah, it might well be that someone like him that has a rugby brain can can manipulate defenses and uh, 
give valuable insight as to when and where to, to to run the ball as opposed to always running it um which i think is what we saw um and we, we want to see lots of running rugby but yeah if, if, if that's all you're doing then you're <laughs> going to get absolutely scrubbed by a good defensive team yeah i mean i don't blame them because what they were doing before was just trying to build foundations and this was for 15 years probably and they still lost like the majority of the game so they might as well try and entertain the crowd if they're going to lose anyway and and do it sort of top down almost i, I found it quite refreshing um but i would like to see them yeah become more effective uh in winning games as well which i think i mean there's the basis of a good squad there so i feel like they'll be more competitive um i still struggle to see them not being in the bottom two uh but we'll see what do you think where do you think they might end up no, I, I think they will be in the bottom two. I, 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 I don't see that. I mean, the 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 form in the URC is is impressive, um, but you know, the problem is you're 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 talking about a completely different level and and a level of 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 what mindset teams turn up um, at. Do you know what I mean? So uh, there's uh, again I, I don't want to be disparaging but that's the reality of you know uh, it's a bit like Newcastle at the moment in the Prem the teams kind of know that the quality isn't quite there so they they sometimes they can catch teams out but they have you know they're doing well they're as I said they're second um in that league and only behind um is it Leinster I think at top um so I don't but I just don't see them I think if they had Wales at home then I think that'd be different that's the last weekend but uh I don't, I don't see there's no, nothing in that squad that's making me think or in in the performance in the World Cup that's making me think they they're going to well, and maybe that's a good thing because over the last few years we've been saying this is the year they're going to do it and they haven't so maybe by downplaying them a little bit they'll surprise us and and turn over some teams and beat Ireland and France um and 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 uh <laughs> you know win the whole thing <laughs> it's almost certain but what do you think uh at home listeners what do you think um is there any players in this italian team that we've, we've missed out that you think might play a, a real pivotal role is there any kind of tactical analysis that you think is going to make a big difference to this italian team this season this six nations let us know in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a conversation and while you're down there give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Elko, thank you very much. Cheers, see you soon. For those at home, get out and play.